morning, everyone. I'm He Qinli, and together with my roommate Xiao Lingwei, today we are going to present to you the fourth topic: cost benefit analysis and cost effectiveness analysis. So let's get started now. How to make a decision? Well, that is where CBA and CA can help a lot. So what are they literally? In general, both of them are economic technique that can help to make decisions by estimating of costs and benefits, quantifying and comparing the economic advantages and disadvantages in many different categories. And when can we use them? They are not only helpful in the program design stage, but also at the evaluation stage in order to assess whether the expectation is well realized. Some say CA is an alternative to CBA. Well, it is more than that. Let's see the comparisons of their differences and to have a better apprehension. First is the criteria of evaluation. CBA focuses on the net benefit, meaning the benefit overweight the cost, and CBA recommends choosing the one with the largest net benefit, no matter how expensive the initial cost is. While CBA takes into account both the costs and outcomes in a systematic way, estimating how much it costs to gain a unit of certain outcome. Its aim is to find the least cost, minimize the cost of achieving a desired result. Second, the quantification of values. CBA uses monetary value standard assumption. Money is the common unit used for comparison of alternatives, and the outcome is described in monetary terms. While CBA is more useful when facing units. That are incommensurable, such as social and environmental domains of sustainable development. Third, the interest. Since CBA weighs the sum of the expect cost and benefit, it is insistent to intro an intergenerational equity as to the distribution of costs and benefits over different individuals. In other words, a good net benefit cannot assure that all the credited interests are good as well. While CEA often reflects the interests of all stakeholders and have a broad view and estimates from society perspective, usually its social benefit exceeds its costs. Some notable points to address. First, it is important to bear in mind the time value of money when weighing future benefits at their present value. A discount rate has strong influence in long term. Second, consider the payback time or the break-even point. It represents the time when the net benefit goes over zero. Check if the time is acceptable. It may be controversial that whether or not a project or policy that maximizes individual preferences is sustainable. Last but not least, especially for CA, some costs or outcomes can be difficult to accurately measure, and it is important to choose a suitable measuring method. Okay, after the introduction, you might wonder how to do the analyze. Actually, it is rather easy, only three steps each. For CBA. First, have an exhausted list of all potential cost benefits, the monetary and non-monetary costs in the cost benefit analysis template. Then, add all the costs and benefits respectively and set up the equation. Last, compare them, and if you find that the benefits are greater than the cost, the action will be a worthwhile investment and should be looked upon as an opportunity, and vice versa. For CEA, first decide which outcome you will use for the comparison and measure the outcome accurately and equally. Then calculate the cost, taking into account every cost associated with the activity. Last, divide the cost by the outcome. The project can be ranked ordered by CE ratio from lowest to highest. The most cost-effective project has the lowest CE ratio. All calculate effectiveness per unit of cost. Projects should be ranked inversely as the former one.
thanks He Chi for the conceptual explanation. I will hereby introduce an example in the practical use of CBA and CEA in decision-making process. Now there are two options for a new real estate project. Option one is to construct 50 single-family houses, and option two is to build apartments available for 100 families with comparatively smaller floor area. In option one, the cost includes the price paid for the land, which is 1 million euro, the cost of surveying, planning, and designing for 150,000 euro, and the cost of construction, including the architectural material cost, the transportation cost of the material and machines, and cost of labor. So it would be this much in the construction phase. Moreover, you are not stopped paying right after construction, as a real estate firm, you may want to advertise your product in public media, for instance, TV ads and a show place in the agency. The propagation cost is 130,000 euro, and since your products are really nice in quality and well promoted, they are also doubt. Before the houses are sold, necessary maintenance cost is 1,000 euro, and we assume other potential cost as 10,000 euro, including tax, etc. So, in total, cost for option 1 is about 5.8 million euro. And how much we can benefit from it? Well, it is much easier. The average sold price is 150,000. For 50 houses, it would be 7.5 million, which is exactly the benefit we can earn. And for the option 2, we decided to build apartments available for 100 families. The price to pay for the land is the same, also surveying, planning, and designing fee are more or less the same, so in the pre-construction phase, we will spend 1.15 million euro. In the construction phase, the cost is a little bit different. Let's say it would be 4.5 million for the material, plus 2 million for transportation, plus 1.8 million for labor, while in the post-construction phase, the cost is the same as well. We simply sum them up, and here we get the total cost of option 2. In the case of benefit, the price is lower since the average area of each apartment is smaller than that of the houses. The average price is 120,000 per unit times 100, and that's what we can earn from option 2. So, here is the first step of cost-benefit analysis. Define all the financial input and output, quantify them, and list them well organized. The second step is to carry out the net benefit, which is the grocery benefit minus the cost. In option 1, the net benefit is about 1.7 million, and for option 2, this value will be 2.4 million euro. As we can see, option 2 certainly have a greater net benefit than option 1. From this analytical result, it seems we would definitely go for option 2 heavily, right? Well, not exactly. If we look at the benefit-cost ratio, which is the benefit divided by cost, for option 1, this value will be 1.29, while for option 2, this will be 1.25. As we can see, if we choose the first one, we can earn 4 cents more than the second with regard to each euro spent. 4 cents is nothing, but it is actually 16% more with regard to the net profit. In this sense, we can say option 1 is more effective in earning money. So, when should we apply CBA and when CEA? Well, actually we should do both before decision making. If the goal is to earn more money for the whole project, then we will choose the one show better off in net benefit. But if we want to earn as much as possible for each single coin spent, then the one with highest benefit cost ratio will win. Cost benefit analysis can be a helpful tool for businesses or individuals to undertake when considering a new course of action. However, there are some disadvantages to practicing a CBA in certain circumstances. For bigger decisions with a longer time horizon, CBA can sometimes fail to take into account other factors that might not be significant in the short term but would impact the long term, like inflation, interest rates, and other larger, more long-term factors. For these calculations, net percent value or internal rate of return are often better methods to use. For more information, we advise you to check the link below and don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much for listening. See you.